All right, so uh, hello everyone from uh, sunny Cambridge. Uh, today uh, we will have a webinar about 45 minutes uh, talking about applied modeling and simulation and how it is used in material science. Uh, today, as uh, Alex mentioned, our presenter will be myself, Marc Meunier, uh, scientist based in Cambridge, and with my colleague Victor Milman, uh, based also in Cambridge in uh, software R&D. The agenda for this uh, presentation and this following, I will uh, briefly introduce you to Dassault System, a uh, large uh, French software company. Uh, then we will talk about our brand, BioVR and what uh, solution we offer, and very quickly uh, drill into our offering in materials modeling and our uh, core product, Material Studio. Then uh, I will give some example, uh, generic first, about uh, how Materials Studio is used, and then uh, we will drill into example in uh, polymer modeling, as well as a few examples in catalysis. After this presentation, we will have a discussion and we are lucky to have Victor here, who is a native Russian speaker. My uh, Russian is, is inexistent, I'm afraid. But so uh, that's a system and a 3D experience company. It's a large uh, software company headquartered in uh, South Paris, in France. Uh, we developed a 3D design and 3D digital mockup product lifecycle management software. We are a scientific company. And then very in particular, the BioVR brand is really uh, very keen on, on scientific development. Uh, so they are, uh, Dassault System is an uh, association of many well-known brands such as Katia, Innovia, or the PLM, and Simulia or SolidWorks, you might know for uh, CAD or uh, design. Eh? So we have millions of users all over the world. Uh, I'm sure many based also in Russia. Uh, we have many partners. And um, yes, it's really a global company. As I mentioned, we have many brands ported on this uh, compass you see here, which we call our 3D experience platforms. Uh, it's really uh, a business experience platform, which we can uh, deliver on premise on cloud or private cloud or public clouds. So all the brands and the apps, the respective applications, are ported on this software platform, uh, which connects so knowledge and know-how. So we combine all the application together, which allow the various uh, engineers, employees, uh, to collaborate better. We deserve uh, 11 uh, industries, such as uh, aerospace, aerospatial, as we're known car manufacturers, uh, industrial equipment, and so forth. Uh, as far as BioVI is concerned, uh, we are also mostly focused on the life sciences and the uh, energy and materials and the CPGs uh, as well. So the Tasso System BioVI uh, is a brand of uh, the portfolio of Tasso System. I'm going to try to play a little Moving now, let's see if that works. Product, nature, life. Everything is made up of molecules, constantly changing and transforming. From the science of life itself, to the technological advancements we've created. Imagine if you could use the power of the digital world to understand these transformations, to truly understand the science behind the world we live in, and use that knowledge to actually improve lives. The capability to discover, design, deploy, and deliver breakthrough innovations at the molecular level will be transformational for enterprises of all industries and promises to provide exponential value to its consumers. Companies everywhere are searching for a new paradigm. Accelerus and Dassault System are joining forces to deliver that new paradigm. Scientific innovation in the age of experience. Accelerus will strongly enrich the solution offerings within chemistry-based industries served by Dassault System. 
bringing the virtual biosphere and materials innovation to the core of these industries. The Dassault System 3D Experience platform, combined with the Accelerus science-based portfolio, enables customers everywhere to evolve faster with more successful business outcomes. Together, we provide an enterprise collaborative environment for biological, chemical, and material experiences, transforming the world of scientific innovation. This vision is so powerful and innovative that we are creating a new brand in the Dassault System portfolio. Biovia, virtual biosphere and materials. All right, yes, so as a little uh, movie uh, mentioned, uh, Biovia is mostly composed of what was Acceleris, and we've been acquired in 2014. So many uh, top pharmaceutical companies are using Biovia. I mentioned uh, some uh, part of our focus on in the life science, in the drug discovery, and the management of laboratory data. Uh, but uh, we also work a lot with other industries and um, in particular, I mentioned uh, energy materials, petrochemicals, um, specialty chemicals, uh, because the portfolio that we have uh, allow for the registration of chemistry, develop new materials, polymer, I will give you some example later, as well as catalyst or solar panels and so forth. So our um, molecular modeling tools are commonly used to predict properties of materials of, of all kinds. Uh, so, yeah, that's the portfolio uh, of BioVR. <clears throat> I mentioned uh, four key areas, the uh, unified lab management for all the uh, handling of the data, the analytical data uh, that are produced in, in uh, development, but also with uh, process production and QC, QA, QC and manufacturing. Uh, for today, uh, the uh, focus is on the collaborative science and our portfolio of uh, software in uh, modeling and simulations. But we, we have tools in cheminformatics, bioinformatics, in biology, system biology, integrative therapeutics, and, and so forth. So if you want more information, uh, please just do uh, go on the uh, BioVR website uh, for the other uh, tools. Uh, important thing at uh, that's a system in general, and also, of course, at BioVR, is, is the idea of a digital twin and the combine, combining uh, virtual and real. So we, as I mentioned, offer the possibility to handle analytical data produced in the lab, but as well as molecular modeling tools, which allow to replicate or model the real materials. And this combination of uh, virtual and real, uh, what we call the digital twin, uh, allow for an in silico experiment where you can predict the behavior of materials before it is even synthesized in the lab. So I allow for better guidance of what should be done next, what is a so-called in silico first approach, which is becoming more and more common in the industry today. And then uh, you have a real uh, feedback loop uh, between the uh, devices uh, in the lab or elsewhere and the 3D simulation, say a molecular modeling, used to create them. And this uh, loop of virtual is real allow for a real progress in the innovation life cycle. In material science engineering, think of a development of a, of a part of a, a vehicle or a plane. Um, uh, so we are looking at the properties of the characteristic of the materials at the bottom of the pyramid here. And that will make the component of the system we want to develop. So BioVR portfolio contains tools for studying materials at the nanoscale. This first diagram here, for example, polymers or metals or, or alloys. And we can understand their physical behavior at the most fundamental level, which will allow us to better um, study the material at a larger scale. And by moving upscale like this, uh, hopefully develop better, more resistant uh, part and then a system and, and device or uh, vehicle, I suppose. So we really want to try to understand yeah, this uh, structure property relationship and the relationship between the materials characteristic itself and, and the properties that we get in the product at the very end. 
So and the focus for today's presentation is really on our Material Studio package, and we will call a predictive material science. So it's a software environment that brings together the world's most advanced and validated material simulation technology, uh, solving a key problem in R&D. So if you think of uh, in a company or uh, even a university and you want to try to develop, to improve upon specific property or you have a material you want to study, how it will behave in certain conditions, uh, uh, you will use such modeling and simulation tool uh, to, to that end. And, uh, and for the industry, an uh, important will be a reduction in R&D spending by using this in silico first approach. Uh, what you want to do is to try before you experiment physically, basically. Uh, so an acceleration of time to market, because you can uh, understand better uh, and you will do less trial and error. And also what's very important is an improved collaboration across the organization so that the material scientists can liaise with the uh, design designers of, of the part and system uh, further down the scale. Also university or in government research lab uh, we will have a better, by using such method, we will have a better understanding of why on uh, materials behave in such a way. So who is using Material Studio? I mentioned uh, BioVia focused on many uh, industries, but uh, chemicals, specialty chemicals companies or process industries, uh, we are uh, happy to have most of the top uh, chemical, uh, largest chemical companies. Uh, in petrochemical, in uh, CPG, in agrochemicals, electronic, aerospace, etc. And that's not just in Europe, in Europe, uh, in uh, North America, in uh, Asia, Pacific as well. And most so major pharmaceutical companies use our solutions. Uh, many uh, major government laboratories and a very large uh, worldwide network of academics are using our software. And uh, I believe. I am correct to say that we do have a few users also based in, in Russia today. We have over 25,000 uh, scientific citations and peer-reviewed journals. We're very proud of that. This is a very uh, fast-growing uh, numbers. Uh, there's a little tool on the Material Studio uh, web page you can find where you can uh, very conveniently type a few keywords and then you will have a reference a link to the reference of uh, who's done what uh, with particular tool of Material Studio. So that's um, very nice. But it, it really show uh, the success uh, of, of this tool, uh, especially in academia, uh, that are, of course, the main uh, producers of those papers. It also shows the diversity of science that can be covered with such tool. So Material Studio is a global environment where you can, a platform environment where you find many different tools combined together. So you can apply them at various scales and to run effective multi-scale studies. So from quantum to classicals to mesoscale all the way. And I will show you later how we also link to the macro scale now or the finite element uh, in particular with the uh, simulia abacus. So uh, Material Studio allows scientists to perform a what-if experiment uh, or stress test, risk assessment, and you want to know first how is the material going to behave, why does it behave this way, what is uh, some uh, energy barrier to a specific chemical reaction, you want to know the miscibility between a compound and another or compound on a polymer, uh, you want to predict crystal structure, uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, it's really about predicting the properties of the materials in silico. So for that, uh, we use first uh, a visualizer, an interface, which uh, one of the key strengths of Material Studio, uh, which is nearly 20 years old now. Uh, and we can build all sorts of models which allow us, as I said earlier, to cover a very wide uh, range of uh, scientific problem. So you can uh, sketch small molecules, but as well as uh, 3D crystals, surfaces, uh, you can build layers uh, and so forth. Uh, today, uh, as I said, we will focus a bit more on polymers and catalysts. So 
uh, we show you how we, we can easily build all sorts of uh, different polymeric materials. But uh, you can build existing or, or uh, ideal structures. And it's important in modeling as well that we can build absolutely pure compounds and model and material, which uh, experimentally can be also quite challenging to access say the pore of a zeolite here to look at the exact uh, cracking site in a zeolite. You can also easily build a families of compounds. Bottom right here, you can see all different of organometallics. Very common problem in catalysis where people want to see the effects of ligands on the um, metal organics and, and see how that affect the uh, say stereospecificity of a polymer. Uh, I will show you an example of that. You can also, uh, as well as using the interface and to build all those things I'm showing you on the screen, uh, use a scripting. Uh, there's a pure scripting API, which allow user to basically build uh, what they want. Polymer builder, so that's a set of functionality included in the visualizer, which allow the user to build 2D linear chains or also to have side chains. You have libraries of ready-made repeat units, but you can also build your own. And then you can uh, mix them. You can build uh, copolymers, tri-blocks, and so forth. You can select tacticity, chain lengths, and, and et cetera, et cetera. And so it's easy to, to build chains. And we'll see how we go then after from those 2D uh, linear model to proper materials. But as I mentioned, uh, you can use uh, here an example of paper uh, in polymers a few years back, where they show the influence, as I said, of the ligand of this uh, metallocene on the uh, polymerization process uh, reaction and how that affects uh, the stereoselectivity. So by using one or another uh, ligand, one can build a, a trans or a cis polybutadiene uh, here. So I have my chains of, uh, of uh, polymers, and then I'm going to mix them together uh, or them with other parts. So here I have example on the first figures of an amorphous cell uh, with containing an amorphous uh, polymers on top of an alumina surface. I can also put them, say, on a graphene surface, I believe, in the middle. Or I can just mix pure different chains together and have a 3D representation of an amorphous phase. And those models are uh, a few tens of nanometers. Uh, and uh, they're already large enough for me to predict uh, physical uh, macro properties, such as densities or uh, mechanical properties, I can calculate uh, thermal behavior, I can predict uh, yeah, viscoelasticity, and we'll see a few examples of time. So that's uh, from the uh, tens of nanometers. I can also now go to a larger scale, and for this I'm going to use a tool of Math Studio included in the coarse graining uh, apps, and uh, so that will allow me to unify some of those atomic atoms that represent the, uh, into bits. And uh, then I'm going to look into the interaction of those bits, uh, and um, which then, by having a system now made of bits, uh, allow me to go from nanometers to micrometers. Uh, and there's a series of uh, functionality, including Material Studio, which allow me to build a pre-ordered system, such as uh, a membrane that you see below here. And, and this sort of tool is commonly used also in industry. Uh, I will show you, uh, for example, at Michelin, where they uh, use a coarse graining of series of monomers uh, to build larger scale models. The atomistic uh, model is not always enough, uh, especially for large, uh, if you want to do very large simulations, it could be too computationally expensive. So you use this coarse graining. And then you use, say, dissipative particle dynamics approach to go up the scale. So within uh, Material Studio, you have a series of simulations tools and right, for based on molecular dynamics. And so uh, MS, uh, Foresight Plus is really uh, the tool for the MD simulations. 
This is fully atomistic, so all the atoms are represented in this case. And a very strong point here for uh, Matter Studio is a false field, which is the um, potential function we use to describe the interaction between the particle of the system. And that is uh, COMPASS and this new version now, COMPASS2, uh, very well validated in particular for a uh, polymeric system. We also, as I said, uh, ha have tool for, meso for the mesoscale, which we called mesocyte, which allows to do uh, DPD and the dissipative particle dynamics, but also coarse grain, MDs, uh, using all sorts of various uh, potential functions, such as united atom force field or tabulated force field and so forth. Then, once I have, uh, so in the MS, the 2019 version of Material Studio, there is this new functionality which allow me to export my Material Studio file from the Mesosite module into an Abacus input file, which then the um, finite element simulation people can, can use directly into the software to do their uh, test. So that's quite convenient. Again, uh, allow really the multi-scale uh, simulation where you, you can really try a new material, calculate densities and uh, distribution in the model, which then uh, you export for your finite element simulation. And the little cube you see becomes your uh, RVE, your representative volume element, which is uh, the um, building block, really, of those uh, finite element uh, simulations. A couple of uh, case study now I mentioned on uh, simulation of polymers. So you can find in literature quite a few papers coming from uh, Michelin and from their research center in Clermont-Ferrand. We had the chance of uh, the, having some of them over the years to come to our uh, user group meeting and where they explain thus how they go exactly through this uh, multi-scale approach of going through the uh, ab initio using quantum mechanical tools uh, to understand the electronic, optical, or magnetic properties of materials, um, look at chemical reactions. Then they will use our uh, molecular dynamic simulation tools like foresight to study the mixture of their uh, polymers and then they use a um, mesoscale tool to uh, look, investigate long, more longer term properties, such as viscoelasticity of uh, soft rubbers, which are, of course, very commonly used in, um, in tires. Uh, tires are extremely complex materials, and they, they contain many different things. It's not just the rubber that we see outside, as are many layers. Uh, and so they use a simulation also to look at the interfaces between the various uh, parts, uh, but also they use a tool to look at the, the effect of the silica bits that are used in uh, commercial car tires uh, and how those interact with the polymers. That is also very important for the mechanical properties. Uh, and very recently, uh, I believe that's still on our website at the, uh, in Germany last uh, May, a month ago now, uh, again, we had a nice presentation by uh, two uh, modelers, scientists of uh, Michelin, uh, Sebastian Garoshi and Benoit Latour, which uh, talked to us about exactly the multi-scale modeling of polymer-based materials for improved tire performance. And, and there, I put there a few of their papers, you can see, where they use various tools, not only the Material Studio package, but various but you know various tools, uh, some homemade, some made with our, of course, with, with our platform uh, to understand the physical behavior of the material and their mixtures. Another uh, publication I found and uh, now from uh, America is about prediction of viscoelastic properties of polymers. I was done with the uh, Goodyear companies uh, to predict uh, viscoelasticity of linear polymers. Again, uh, they have uh, in this nice paper combine atomistic level simulation from Material Studio with the Abacus finite element uh, analysis and to predict dynamic moduli, zero rate shear viscosity, and uh, uh, relaxity uh, moduli. 
So uh, you can find the reference to paper here. And uh, so that really, as I said in my earlier slide on material science engineering, is really how you go from the physical characteristic or the properties of the material all the way up to the part, component, or product here, you know, full tire, uh, by uh, combining simulation and, of course, laboratory data, but combining a simulation at those various scales. And, and this uh, work uh, now from 2012 is one of the first work where they use this multi scale computational framework to predict viscoelasticity properties of those entangled polymeric materials. So the, the author uh, report uh, can importantly can also be applied to the design of polymeric material with a top down approach. Point here is uh, what I said initially, this is really about the in silico first approach where you try to modify the chemistry of your material uh, or the formulation itself, the ratio uh, concentrations of holes and to see what impact this will have uh, later down uh, in, in your development. Now those tools are uh, also can be used by uh, expert modelers, dedicated uh, scientists, but uh, in order to improve also productivity and also to distribute to a greater number of people, we've also ported some of those applications to uh, our um, pipelining tool called Pipeline Pilot, which allow to basically build a workflow, like a script, where uh, in, in uh, one click, uh, you choose your chemistry and then choose a range of properties that you want to study. So one of them could be here, the glass transition temperature of polymers, a very important uh, properties for the, studying the stability yeah, of such materials. So you will choose a repeat unit, create 3D models with the amorphous cell module I mentioned before, run a series of molecular dynamic simulation at various temperature points, and then uh, look when uh, how your model density changes across this temperature range. And then it doesn't have to be just pure uh, polymers. You could add water, you could add additive, or mixed uh, different polymer chains and so forth. So here I take again a, a tire example, uh, SBR uh, 75, and, and I look at the variation of the density of specific volume, sorry, here inverse density uh, as a function of temperature. And uh, I can see the um, where the line crosses uh, is, is my region of uh, glass transition. I, I know that the polymer will then be glassy uh, when I go below 290 uh, Kelvin. So not just a, a, a quantitative information here, but uh, more importantly, and that's general for uh, simulation really, more importantly is, is about what happened now if I put a couple of uh, percentage of water, then what happened to my TG? Do you have a plasticization effect? Uh, so a lowering of TG or and how much? Or if I add, um, some specific additive, so how my stability will be affected. And, and that's really the key here uh, in, in modeling and simulation is, is to, to do those what if experiments. Uh, it's not just about reproducing known data. Uh, that can be a challenge in itself, but more importantly for the development uh, of new product or the understanding of uh, physical behavior, we, we want to know what happened when we modify our chemistry or, or the environment and, and see what effect that has on properties. Uh, so I mentioned the stability and, uh, and TG, of course, uh, especially again for polymers, uh, mechanical properties are very uh, relevant. What happens so when I uh, stress, when I um, pull, say, my unit cell in one direction, what uh, response do I obtain? So then uh, this response would be, of course, dependent upon the type of material I have. And so I can uh, use molecular dynamic simulation to look at the so-called stress strain curve, uh, and look at the elongation and look at the response. And again, I can uh, automate such uh, polymer uh, workflows uh, in this uh, other uh, pipeline pilot 
protocol which we are looking at again I choose my uh, I have a reader so I choose the material the models I want to build and again by using a series of those little blue components that you see here I will uh, if I will basically apply some uh, sort of scripts of functionalities onto the models and then uh, in output get a nice uh, report uh, say on the in this case our mechanical uh, properties or the stress train uh, diagram like uh, the one here so I run those uh, long uh, NVT dynamics uh, increase the strain on progressively on on the unit cell the model and then I measure the stress at each strain point uh, and then I will obtain uh, relevant information like the Poisson's ratio and so forth or the moduli right so that that was for our uh, polymer simulation examples there are many more and polymers are very commonly studied by uh, as a, a simulation tools uh, today we chose to show you example in the tire manufacturer space but uh, it, they are used in, in many other companies specialty companies uh, say at Solvay, Henkel, Basseff and Falls. Now another a very important area of application of molecular modeling is in catalysis. Uh, petrochemical companies in particular were among the first to use modeling tools originally from, say, more applied to the discovery, say, 20, 30 years ago. But uh, very quickly, chemists understood that they, they needed to understand better uh, reactions. And most of the, if not, uh, say, a very large majority of products today are used some cat uh, catalyst at some point. Huh? And so catalysis is, uh, is a chemical process to uh, increase the rate of chemical reaction. And we add a little magic powder called the catalyst mm -hmm. so it lowers the activation energy what you see here on the right bottom right and the energy reaction path power diagram and with and without catalyst so what we try to do is to understand how much uh, effect on this reaction path uh, the catalyst can have and what happened again when i modify the chemistry of this catalyst on my surface uh, what happened to my uh, energetics of the reactions So we use, so well, we have homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysts depending if, if we have a solvent or not. As I said, uh, many, many products developed today use catalysts, so a petrochem, but uh, all of chemistry really will be based at some point uh, on catalysis. So we use the term computational catalysis uh, to uh, really is a study of chemical reactions uh, in the broader sense to predict the material's property, so the effect on, on those uh, energetics. So I can compute properties such as adsorption energies, uh, reaction bias. I can look at transition states. Again, something that very convenient in modeling and simulation because on my uh, screen, I can freeze the material in those transition states where experimentally those are very short lived, maybe a picosecond or less and uh, that would be very challenging then to get any analytical information out of such a short-lived species whereas here I can freeze the screen and uh, really uh, investigate uh, properties of, of this uh, species. I can look again at trends across series of catalysts as I mentioned before what happened when I change the ligands of my metallocene what effect that will have on the uh, turnover number or on the stereospecificity of, of the polymer. And there are many methods. Uh, very importantly, the quantum, quantum mechanical based methods are mostly used in this field. And we have many such tools inside Material Studio uh, in CASTEP, DMOL, OneTEP, and, and others, in fact, uh, that uh, use a DFT to um, predict the uh, electronic optical uh, properties uh, of materials so that we are really at the uh, nanoscale here. But there are other tools I will mention too uh, that are used also in this field uh, based on Kinetic Monte Carlo and also uh, Contera. 
Again, Material Studio interface allows for the building of models that are really fully relevant to the study of uh, catalysts. So I can study uh, dissociations, a uh, reaction here of methane and a uh, metal. Uh, but uh, again, zeolite, very commonly used uh, in petrochem. Um, and also a surface catalyst, a uh, metallocene catalyst can, can be used. And again, we use this V plus R approach where we look at the theory uh, to support the chemical reaction we study, but as well as uh, looking at the experimental data that we have and compare. Uh, the catalyst can be idealized, modeled as a pure surface, but that's of course not really the case. Uh, we can complexify our model by using more realistic models by adding, say, steps, uh, size, um, change chemistry, the environment, and so forth. So typically, so in, uh, we, we have added in the uh, new release of uh, Matter Studio 2019. Uh, so, and, and from previous, we have a tools to study um, reaction mechanism, typically using a DMOL cube. You will look at, uh, say, a chemical reaction, and and then you would uh, model each one of them, calculate the transition state, obtain a reaction rate, and then from that you could say go into Contera to simulate uh, the full uh, reactor to look at the evolution uh, of the species uh, with time. Uh, so if I look at a uh, gas phase reaction rate in a DMOL cube or um, a DFT code, sorry. So if I think of a simple biomolecular uh, bi reaction, sorry, um, then uh, we'll be interested in uh, terms or cons uh, equilibrium constant reaction rates, uh, which will be really key to characterize the particular reaction I'm interested in. So we have tool to search for the transition states. So you put your models left and right reactant good products, and, and then you find how they go from uh, one to the next. You look at the uh, kinetics of the reactions, and then the uh, analysis tools of DMOL uh, will output all those into a nice report, a, a spreadsheet, where you have all the um, characteristics you want. I mentioned also so in the new release of Matter Studio, a new tool called Kinetics, uh, based on the Kinetic Monte Carlo methods. So in this uh, KMC method, and the information is condensed in a set of elementary processes such as uh, adsorption on the surface, transport or diffusion on the surface, growth, uh, evaporation or desorption. And, and then you look at the time evolution of uh, each uh, such site, catalytic site, and, and how each species uh, appear and disappear and react on, on those sites. The so tool is based on an academic code known as a CARLOS developed at Eindhoven. Uh, Matteo Studio has, a, I must say, also an ensemble of tools that are homemade, but uh, many also uh, historically or presently have been developed in collaboration with uh, universities, with academics, and, um, and are still being developed in such a way. The other tool also more recently for catalysis implemented in Matteo Studio is called Cantera which basically is a solver for chemical rate and transport equation. So in this case, uh, using our previous data, we, we can look at the uh, time evolution of the concentration of the species in the reactor. And we can perform various tasks. Uh, so. I've only uh, mentioned a few applications here, but uh, Material Studio allows the studies of a very wide range of materials, as I said, because it contains all these various technology that can be applied uh, to polymers and catalysts, but also to nanofluid, to zeolite, nanotubes, to crystals, and, and so forth. So uh, it's very important to bear in mind that uh, it's not a tool where you have a single uh, database of materials and then you only play with those. You can really build uh, your own, you can mix and match uh, as much as you want uh, your materials in order to create innovative products. 
and uh, combine with the rest of the BioVR and the DASO system offering uh, really you can look, as I say, at materials in silico to predict properties. But uh, I mentioned also how we can automate and create those uh, so-called bots to automate uh, the prediction of given properties. We can do proper multi-scale and multi-physics also prediction uh, simulation by combining with our uh, sister brands at Simulia and, and others, which allow to pass information across the scale. And we also have a lot of, uh, within BioVia and, and DASO in general, we have possibility to do a lot of statistics, uh, to do machine learning, uh, to apply machine learning tools to the study of materials. Um, so if you want more information, uh, please do go on, on our uh, BioVia website. You can find a re recent white papers on understanding materials properties and how uh, this is really key for uh, novel product innovations. And that would be it. Thank you for listening. If you have any question now, we can do it in English or in Russian. Thank you. Uh, thank, thanks, Mark. Uh, коллеги, у нас uh, открывается сессия вопросов и ответов. Пожалуйста, не стесняйтесь. Все, что вы хотели спросить по материал студию, обязательно спрашивайте. Вы также можете писать в чат, если есть какие-либо вопросы. Можете спрашивать на русском, можете спрашивать на английском, как вам удобней. Александр, а слышно меня? А, да, Андрей, слышно. Вопрос, если на русском, то к Виктору, я так полагаю. Ну, наверное, вот это вопросик из списка, который я вам пересылал, маленький. А, в каких можно ли как-нибудь э, варьировать геометрию двухмерной области э, в кинетикс, на которой протекает реакция, или она только вот плоскость э, с кристаллической структурой? Окей, кинетикс кинетикс построен на двумерной периодической решетке. Латтис газ, решеточный газ mm -hmm. должен быть периодическим. Может быть, не обязательно 90 градусов углы, любая симметрия, но периодично в двухмерном пространстве. Mm -hmm. Но есть разные хитрые способы, как в этой геометрии ввести дефекты, например, ступеньки на поверхности. Их можно ввести в эту, mm -hmm. в эту схему можно что еще можно в этом а, а, какая на самом деле задача что вы хотите моделировать а, ну Это хотим моделировать а, слышно да меня да да а, моделировать хотим протекание, то есть химическую реакцию на поверхности твердого тела с газовой средой или средой, где есть водяной пар. И вопрос такой, обязательно ли участок поверхности должен быть плоской, плоскостью с кристаллической структурой? То есть вот можно делать какую-то ступенечку или дефект, правильно? Можно. Можно. А аморфность э, этой структуры, а вот, аморфность структуры поверхности нельзя задать, да? То есть а вот аморфно это уже слишком. И mm -hmm. в этой системе в вашей э, газовая фаза, она не будет описываться в Kinetics. Все, что будет, э, это будет описание процессов адсорбции, десорбции, 
Угу. Какая-то происходит интересная химия в газовой фазе, то здесь скорее нужна кантера. Кантера тоже может описывать угу. химию на поверхности. Ну, там в газовой фазе, там, газовая фаза как бы носитель э, или, химических элементов, то есть катализатор самого, в общем. То есть э, реакции там не важны или не интересны, да? Да, там вот именно то интересно то, что будет происходить на поверхности вот твердого тела. Ну, это тогда можно описать в Kinetics. То есть, mm -hmm. да, по сути, все, что нужно, тогда этот флакс, поток, сколько приходит, mm -hmm. сколько уходит. Если есть барьеры для, газ, mm -hmm. для взаимодействия газа с поверхностью, это все можно ввести в Kinetics. Mm -hmm. И нужны будут трюки для того, чтобы ввести отклонение от периодичности на поверхности. А, а да. можно, к сожалению... Угу, я понял. А, хорошо, спасибо, пожалуйста. А трюки, то есть какого рода, где можно получить информацию об этих трюках, или это придется выдумывать, изобретать самостоятельно? Марк уже говорил, что Kinetics основана в глубине своей на программе Carlos из Альфовена. У нас есть документация к программе, на веб-сайте тоже должна быть документация. А, то есть Если... документация есть трюки, да, правильно? Абсолютно, да. А, то то есть, обычно а... иногда просто трюки – это такое ну, авторское ноу-хау. Ну, оно авторское, но оно описано, да. А, хорошо, спасибо, теперь очень все понятно. Спасибо большое. К сожалению, Эйнховен несколько лет назад решил, что химия катализа никому не нужна, и факультет они закрыли. Йохан Лукеен все еще там, но он в прикладной математике. Тоник Янсен оттуда уже несколько лет назад уехал, работал в Shell, сейчас я уже даже не помню, где он. Но документация все еще существует, и... Mm -hmm. И мы можем помочь с этим, если есть проблемы uh -huh. с университетским доступом. Хорошо, спасибо большое за очень подробный ответ. Спасибо. Спасибо, Андрей. Марк, Виктор, there is another one question in uh, chat. Yeah, I can see that. So I can take over that one um, if it's in English. And, uh, so what type of model, water model is used in Metal Studio? So we, we don't have a, a force field specifically for water, such as Tip 3 or commonly used in simulation, but our uh, force fields, at least the compass force field, do include uh, potential types for water molecules. So it is possible to simulate uh, uh, water-based models or mixture within a uh, material studio. Yeah. There are many force fields uh, inside material studios, such as uh, driving or compass and, and uh, UFF and OPLS and extra extra for material and plenty more also in the GULP package, uh, mostly for uh, inorganics. Uh, uh, can I use uh, only TIP 3P model? So not as such, TIP 3P model you wouldn't because uh, when well, it's not uh, ported in Material Studio, what you can do is matter in, in Foresight is to use what we have called a force field manager. So if, mm -hmm. if you have access to all the uh, potential types and parameters of the potential, you could uh, recreate uh, the force field potentials with the, using this force field manager inside the interface Mat Studio and then when you use your IMD simulation, call upon that particular force field. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can't just, you know, say I want to use tip three, but if, if you create a tip three force field page uh, with a force field manager, then then you will it will be the same. Uh, okay. I don't think there are any partic very particular uh, analytical functions, but Material Studio do accept all sort of uh, analytical function for the covalent treatment of uh, bonds. Вот, спасибо, коллеги. 
Да, Инна, слушаю. Thank you for your wonderful presentation, and I would like to ask one question about rate of calculations. Uh, what advantage does the program, I mean, uh, Beovia, have in uh, comparison with uh, other programs? I mean, LAMPS, uh, um, VASP, and other, other in molecular dynamics. Okay, um, so let's talk about uh, LAMPS, because VASP is really more of a, if I understand, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe VASP is more just a DFT-based uh, program. It does not really offer MD. But uh, compare, so if we look at coarse grain and both side or meso side here, uh, is, as I said, Material Studio is a complete software environment which allows for very easily to build various type of models. So that's a very important point. I'd say LAMPS would not offer you the possibility to build anything. Uh, now, LAMPS is very well adapted to very large-scale simulation, and that's why it was developed for. Uh, so if you have a, a minion at home and you want to run that for hundreds of nanoseconds, then yes, by all means, do use LAMPS. Uh, now, in industry, we don't often have the time to run such uh, simulation, and so the convenience of using a commercial package then come into play in terms of productivity, and, and industrial modelers would rather use a bit longer the computational time uh, because that's cheaper than using their own time to build a model and look at the calculation and make sure that uh, everything converges and run according to plan. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, productivity gain by using a commercial package compared to an academic one. But we do understand and fully appreciate that the launch package is uh, very good it's very specific for particular applications, uh, very popular, and we actually have implemented uh, within the pipeline pilot package, uh, which comes with the Material Studio uh, industry version, uh, we have implemented uh, components, so functionality, if you wish, to run LAMPS directly from uh, Material Studio. Thank you so much. Если действительно интересует сравнение с VASP тоже, ну, как вы наверняка знаете, в теории функционала плотности есть очень много программ и пакетов, которые все более-менее делают одно и то же. Да, да. И... В Material Studio у нас есть CASTEP, это более-менее прямой аналог VASP, код, программа, которая существовала до VASP. У нас есть DIMOL, здесь у нас не плоские волны, как базис, а численные атомные орбитали, существенно быстрее, особенно для молекулярных систем. Есть OneTap с, линейным, с линейной зависимостью от количества атомов, как на линию Scaling DFT. Спасибо, Марк. Quantum Mechanics. WAMP это полуэмпирический метод, очень быстрый для молекул. Кюмера – это QMMM, гибридный метод, DFTB+, tight binding, то есть полный набор методов, разные, немного разные области применения. Если интересуют проблемы в катализе, то Dimol и Castup используются очень широко в этой области. В обоих программах есть методы для поиска Transition state в переходных состояниях. Да, то есть можно посчитать барьеры, можно посчитать скорости реакции микроскопические, вставить их дальше в кинетикс или в кентера для макроскопической кинетики. Спасибо. Мой вопрос был больше про сравнение скорости. То а, есть вот. насколько быстро да, работает программа по сравнению там, с другими программами по молекулярной динамике, например. Традиционный ответ – it depends. Понятно. То есть, скажем, даже в нашем наборе, если сравнивать Dimol и Castup, в зависимости от проблемы, мы бы рекомендовали или один способ, или другой, в основном исходя из скорости. То есть реакции в газовой фазе, безусловно, Dimol и Dimol – один из самых быстрых способов в функционале плотности. Сейчас появляются FHI-AIMS, 
наверное, уже быстрее, чем дымо, но прежний это один из самых быстрых способов. Если системы очень большие, OneTap, и есть большой компьютер, здесь можно вставлять системы десятки тысяч атомов с квантово-механическим подходом. Мало что может с этим сравниться. То есть, действительно, ответ зависит от того, какие у нас задачи, какой уровень теории. Да, я вас поняла. Спасибо. Пожалуйста. А можно в Material Studio? То есть в Material Studio есть э, какие-то скрипт-команды, как я понял, да? Да. А, то есть... Э... Но он, я как понял, там какие-то команды, но она, они ограничены, вот, допустим, в сравнении с LAMPS, там в LAMPS почти все что угодно можно в input файл ввести, а в Material Studio он как-то ограничен все-таки, да, в сравнении? Но он не так гибок, то есть... Вы знаете, я, наверное, с вами тут не соглашусь. Значит, скриптинг в Material Studio у нас основан на Perl, Сейчас этот язык уже мало кто любит, знает и уважает, но он по-прежнему работает. Все, что можно сделать в Material Studio через интерфейс, все, это, все то же самое можно сделать через скрипт. Любые какие-то мелкие параметры, которые можно изменять на экране, нажимая на кнопочки, их все можно задать в скрипт. То есть LAMPS это там только вы редактируете файл. Здесь другой подход, но идея, в общем, та же. Все, все какие нужны параметры, все, все, что нужно задать для FOSIDE, если мы сравниваем LAMPS, то LAMPS и FOSIDE. А все, что можно задать FOSIDE, все можно задать через скрипт. А вот в этом скрипте, допустим, есть, как можно рассчитать скорость потока воды там, или движение, допустим, нанотрубки э, под определенным, а под определенной формулой по косинусоиде? То есть э, можно вот прям э, детально вот такие задавать задачи? А, значит, окей. Okay. Uh, это программа расчеты энергии, сил, напряжения. И дальше можно, естественно, на этом строить молекулярную динамику или расчет упругих свойств и так далее. Но само по себе оно не строит вам структуру и не объясняет, как что куда течет. Это, что называется, mm -hmm. задача того, что у нас происходит в и через скрипт можно, безусловно, задать координаты и законы изменения этих координат. Mm -hmm. Это же... То есть скрипт, он включает все. Там можно смешивать и классическую механику, и квантовую, и любые внешние какие-то изменения, которые вы хотите внести в систему. Mm -hmm. Okay. То есть а, нанотрубки, их можно у нас строить, есть эти нанобилды с Material Studio, естественно, можно потом молекулы какие-нибудь в них вставлять, и, и, как вы говорите, задать поток или какие-то правила, что куда движется, можно ввести внешнее электрическое поле, если это, например, играет роль. Ну, возможно, то, чтобы нанотрубка, она э, колебалась, допустим. Я хочу, чтобы она колебалась. Это возможно в Material Studio под определенными частотами, чтобы я еще мог менять эти частоты? Можно. А что вы, если не секрет, хотите мерить? А, ну, нанопампинг эффект. То есть, э, как бы, трубка колеблется и идет... Э, то есть всасывание воды и хотел рассчитать там скорость потока вот с помощью этой программы вообще возможно нет 
Можно, можно, безусловно, написать скрипт. То есть у вас эти колебания, они какие-то внешне наведенные, то есть они не результат взаимодействия атома в трубке с чем-то. Внешне, да. Правда? Да, да, да. То есть вы просто записываете уравнение движения для этих атомов, uh -huh. которые будут uh -huh. отделяться их взаимодействием. А взаимодействие uh -huh. с молекулами воды будет тогда описываться через форсайт, к примеру. И лично не пробовал, но все, все инструменты для этого есть. Mm, то есть я в форсайте пишу скрипт, потом я ее Нет, прогоняю, скрипт, потом... Скрипт, он... Общий, он Material Studio скрипт. Mm -hmm. В этом скрипте там будут и какие-то инструкции, которые задают положение атомов, инструкции, которые будут задавать уравнение движения этих атомов, и там же можно вставить форсайт, задать какие-то параметры для форсайт и форсайт run. Форсайт будет считать энергии и оптимизировать структуры, и вода будет двигаться под влиянием. А у меня вот еще один такой вопрос. А вот Material Studio, допустим, я построил модель, потому что ее легче всего там построить. И я хочу вытащить координаты и, допустим, использовать их в LAMS. Это возможно? Hmm. Data file, допустим, LAMS. Material Studio, конечно, есть экспорт, и можно файлы записывать в разных популярных форматах. Из Material Studio из самого этого приложения нельзя записать в формате LAMPS, но, mm -hmm. как Марк говорил, в Pipeline Pilot мы можем помочь, и там у нас есть компонент, который может организовать экспорт в LAMPS. Марк хочет сейчас что-то показать. Are you sharing? No. Okay. Yes, the question was how to get lumps files out of Material Studio. What's this? So that's well, so yeah. that's a simulation of uh, water, and I have uh, used the uh, pipeline pilot scripting interface to uh, call uh, from my water model here of Material Studio create an input file inside uh, lamp and then um, look and then I run the uh, specific so that is a text yeah, of created by Pablo Parrot and that is my output and that is the uh, simulation of the lamp model of water so very very simple but uh, so As Victor, I think, uh, was saying that we, we can navigate from uh, using scripting or pipeline parrot. Uh, we can navigate from uh, one simulation package to the next, but that's pretty much uh, very much uh, advanced scenario. Uh, we okay. Okay. Thank you. Спасибо за информацию. Александр уже ответил Георгию. Окей. Коллеги из РХТУ, у вас, может быть, какие-то вопросы есть? Нет, на данном этапе нет. Мы только вкатываемся в вопрос биологии. Понятно. Ну, может быть, вопросы там связанные с лицензированием, есть какие-либо, с машинным обучением. По вопросу лицензирования, мы, у нас была встреча на прошлой неделе, в принципе, нас достаточно подробно проконсультировали. Прошу прощения, а можно вопрос, может быть, по теме катализа? Я вот вспомнил, что хотел спросить. Конечно. Ну, может быть, и не по теме. 
А подскажите, пожалуйста, есть ли, ну, очевидно, наверное, есть возможность в Material Studio смоделировать диффузию атома внутрь кристаллической решетки в объем? Конечно. Но я так понимаю, это не средствами кинетикс, да, поскольку там все-таки плоская 2D структура. Да. А каким образом это лучше? Каким инструментарием? Окей. Uh, okay. В принципе, диффузия с точки зрения наших пакетов, такие как Demo Caster, это просто частный случай реакции. Есть барьер, через барьер нужно перейти. Mm -hmm. У нас есть э, способы найти путь этой траекторию реакции, найти барьер. Кинетикс, mm -hmm. для него такая информация, это уже это вход, а не выход. Это будет какой-то индивиду, индивидуальный процесс. Кинетикс mm -hmm. в том, чтобы собрать их все эти микроскопические процессы и построить макроскопическую картину. А, да, прошу прощения, ну да, это просто кинетикс, да. это как бы мезоуровень уже, да? Кинетикс нужно, как правило, ему нужна информация, скажем, о коэффициенте поверхностной диффузии. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Потому как так достигается эквилибрейшн на, на поверхности. Для диффузии в объем... Uh -huh. Димул или Кастеп нужно построить модель реактант продукты, где начинается прыжок, где кончается, и Material Studio дальше найдет все, что происходит между этими uh -huh. двумя структурами. Uh -huh. Хорошо, спасибо большое. Спасибо. Пожалуйста. Uh, Mark, that's probably a question for you, whether Moscow University has Boyovia customers. Um, I'm reasonably certain that... Кто-то спрашивает, Георгий спрашивает про пользователей в МГУ. Uh, безусловно, есть публикации из МГУ, в которых используются наши продукты. Uh, если нужны подробности, я могу, конечно, попробовать найти, но Александр, наверное, лучше знает. Может быть, Марк, Марк, ты знаешь? Что ты знаешь? Moscow University. Ну, Алекс? Ты знаешь, что ты используешь в университете Москвы? Ну, я думаю, что these discussions should be held in another place and now we're oh, okay, talking sorry. about okay. some products okay. no, not about users from MCU. Okay? Sure, I understand. Господа, по Material Studio, по Pipeline Pilot, еще какие-либо вопросы любого порядка? Можно еще один вопрос? Столько, сколько Только... нужно, Андрей. Да, я, ну, наверное, с катализом, да, с темой не очень связан. Вот сейчас просто так интересно, ну, я, конечно, поищу по публикациям, может быть, подскажете, известно ли вам о применении Material Studio для моделирования процессов спекания? Что-нибудь такое, каких-то вот там физических эффектов, политических эффектов, именно которые происходит при спекании. А, спекание. А, это мы о чем говорим? Порошковая металлургия? А, пора, либо спекание металлических порошков, либо керамических, там не суть важно. Ну просто а, соединение там двух частиц в твердой фазе без расплавления. А, понятно. Есть такие статьи. А, это как правило. Классические расчеты, то есть форсайт, без квантовой mm -hmm. механики. Как правило, системы слишком большие. Ну да, системы, правда, а, большие. И... Хорошо, и... да, я, я, я поищу по ключевым словам. Да, спасибо. Я могу вам прислать ссылки, если интересует. Ну, вы, наверное, не утру... я, что я буду вас утруждать, я по ключевым словам отлично да. найду, наверное. Хорошо. Да, спасибо большое. Спасибо. 
А можно еще такой вопрос? Подскажите, пожалуйста, а каким-либо образом можно задавать действия тока на систему? То есть вообще какой-либо ток можно давать на систему в биове? А, можно. А, как правило, мы бы скорее говорили о потенциале, о том, как, это уж как получится. В DMOL и в DFTB Plus в обоих есть способ расчета current voltage. То есть можно прикладывать потенциал и смотреть, какая проводимость и какой действительно. Можно тоже прикладывать потенциал и внешнее поле, и в фосайт, и в галп. Смотреть, как это влияет, скажем, на динамику в системе. Но электронная проводимость, для этого нужна квантовая механика, DMO, DFTB+. Если, к примеру, интересует проводимость в электролитах, в батареях, то там можно все это делать и без электронной проводимости. Там мы очень успешно рассчитываем характеристики, используя FOSI. И можно даже потом эти результаты вставить в макроскопические расчеты. Это популярное у нас сейчас направление. Всем нужны хорошие новые батареи, диффузии лития в электролитах и в в электродах, это мы все с удовольствием рассчитываем. С внешним потенциалом, без потенциала. Поняла, спасибо большое. Пожалуйста. Окей. Импортин фром Каусен. В Material Studio есть интерфейс Каусен. Он был создан достаточно давно, и проверить, как он работает с новыми версиями Gaussian мы не можем, поскольку компания Gaussian не любит, чтобы конкуренты пользовались ее лицензиями. У нас доступа к Gaussian нет, так что в подробностях комментировать их последние версии не могу. Есть у нас пользователи, у которых есть и Gaussian, и Material Studio. Как правило, они не жалуются. Но, опять же, на этом уровень моей информации заканчивается. Моделирование. Ой. Много вопросов. Сейчас, погодите, не успеваем. Mark, question for you about modeling of dense 3D polymer networks, differences in kinetics of reacting groups, molecules, effects of composition, anything about dense polymer networks? Well, um, okay, so there's a question uh, Victor translated to me about dense polymer networks. So it is possible uh, with Material Studio, uh, in particular with the modular morphous cell and some scripting to build uh, 3D uh, networks, uh, say epoxy system, for example and to study uh, their mechanical property or their stability and glass transition and so forth. So those are, are, are used, uh, say, in an uh, aerospace company, uh, also, uh, and, and others, uh, to study the um, physical properties of, of such materials. Uh, so you can build uh, your uh, 3D networks with Material Studio, uh, same way as you build uh, linear chains, pretty much. Uh, 
and then you can mix and mat you can mix them with some uh, thermoplastic chains or with additives or with some water and, and see uh, and, and predict the behavior. Вопрос о магнитных свойствах. Это все про квантовую механику. Классическая не очень понимает магнитные свойства. Во всех наших квантовых приложениях есть возможность проводить спинполяризованные расчеты. То есть в результате получается магнитный момент. Какие-то другие свойства уже нужно придумывать самим, скажем, магнитная анизотропия, это нужно строить моделирование самому на основании этих магнитных моментов, которые мы посчитаем. А если кого-то интересует НМА, ядерно-магнитный резонанс, Кастет может считать химические сдвиги, градиенты электрического поля, квадропольное взаимодействие, то есть все, что связано с экспериментом по магнитному резонансу, доступно через карты. Если какие-то более специфические вопросы, какие магнитные свойства, можем обсудить дальше. Can I help to model interfaces? Let's say polymer nanoparticle interface, adhesion between phases. Yes, yes, you, you, you can build very complex uh, mixture models. Uh, so we have the window cleaners here outside. Uh, you, you, you can build uh, such composite materials. Uh, if you look at the screen here, uh, typically. Here, some uh, amorphous silica with the uh, rubber polymers around. Uh, you can build small nanoparticles uh, of silica here, or you can build uh, a 2D uh, model of a surface of uh, amorphous glass and put the amorphous polymer on top and try to study the interaction between the two phases. Uh, another question, what kind of computational resources needed for modeling 3D networks? Uh, in terms of uh, uh, computational resources, uh, again, if you want uh, all the details, please do look at the system requirement page of Material Studio uh, web page. But uh, in terms of those, those methods, some of those uh, calculation can take a bit of time and uh, use quite a bit of uh, computational resources. So you, you can go, say, from the few minutes calculation uh, all the way to a few days or, or weeks, uh, if, if really you push it to the limits. Uh, most of the time, uh, simulation would last for a few hours to a maximum of a day. Uh, we tend to repeat many times the same in silico experiment and average over uh, in simulation in quantum mechanics. Uh, no, uh, you you should have the same answer every time you you run the same calculation, obviously. But uh, some of those uh, DFT based codes like Demon and Castep that were mentioned are quite uh, memory demanding, so it's good to have a lot of say 16 gigabyte per core. Those MD simulation uh, can be distributed over a right number of CPUs. So you can do use a 1632 CPU for each uh, simulation. If you have a very large polymeric material you want to model. Um, but in general, uh, to start with, uh, a, a very state-of-the-art uh, PC is all you need. Uh, you, you don't have to invest in a very uh, expensive uh, high-performance computer uh, to start with uh, running really relevant simulations. And the software runs on the window package, uh, the interface anyway, and after that can the jobs, the solvers, can be executed on all sorts of machines, uh, Windows, Linux, and, and so forth. Uh, Victor, what is that? Uh, okay, that's for me. Differential scanner calorimetry. 
А, честно скажу, первый раз слышу о том, что такое существует. А, с, 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 калориметрия – это какие применения? Это, опять же, физика полимеров? Есть вопрос про моделирование дифференциальной сканирующей калориметрии. Какие задачи это решает? Расскажите нам немного о методе. Если нужно просто предсказать рентгенограммы, то материал Studio, безусловно, есть все рентгеновские программы. Yeah. Okay, thermal effects of phase transitions. Опять же, это про полимеры или про все что угодно? Да, это про полимеры. Калориметрия это в основном метод, который используется для изучение того, что происходит с полимерами при нагревании. Ну, в том числе фазовые переходы, например, полимера. Например, кристаллизация, стеклование, ну и так далее. Окей. Okay. Uh, question is about uh, thermal effects in polymers and heating phase transitions. So, стеклование, Марк uh, показывал пример Макс Рикот подошел до ТТ, протокол Адриан зарезал вас. И я. Окей. Вот это пример uh, моделирования полимеров как функции температуры. И протокол в Python Pilot уже готовый для предсказание температуры. Вопрос, это что еще за ошибка такая большая для температуры? Uh, do, do you know why uh, that plus minus is so huge? What does 122 about? Yeah, that's, no, that's a mistake in the uh, correlation. Uh, where, what mathematics do you use to make a regression to know where the uh, lines are crossing? But if you look at the uh, simulation standard deviation, Uh, you can see that they are actually very small. When you do an MD simulation with, with a force field like compass, uh, you will obtain an accuracy on density that is in the range of 3%, say. So you can see that each, each one point here is probably an average of a few four or five uh, simulation data points, and if they are less than uh, 1%, 103 to 104. So for each temperature point. Now the, the data here is taken from the fact that you can do the regression to find this transition in different way and using uh, various mathematical ways. Uh, stop to do nothing to do with the simulation. Fix the slide. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> scary. Say it's 12.2. Yeah. Uh, да. В общем, когда говорят, что, наверное, нет такой функции, я думаю, что это правильно, поскольку и люди, сидящие здесь за столом и не слышали о такой функции, то действительно нет ее в материал студии. The important is not the reproduction uh, qualitative of, of quantitatively of a number, but uh, the possibility, I mean, of course, you need to make sure that your simulation is, is close to the experimental data when you have them. But what's very important is in your simulation is to understand, say, the effect of adding water. 1%, 3%, 5%, what's the plasticization effect on your polymer here? Uh, what happens if I change the side group of SBR and uh, on the TG or the mechanical properties? And uh, yes, some validation and uh, comparison with experiments is important, of course, for validation, but uh, more importantly is to understand the trends that explain the behavior of the material under certain conditions and the effect that the change in chemistry of formulation has on the macroscopic property of interest. I 
Alex, we are nearing uh, five o'clock now. Just uh, one last question, maybe. Okay. Is that a okay. Okay. It's reasonable. Uh, so one last question from chat, and uh, then we uh, should over this webinar, and all other questions should be held in uh, via email with me. Yeah. Okay. okay. This one goes to Mark. Okay. Uh, can we model degradation of biodegradable polymers under different conditions, different temperatures, or that is additive? <clears throat> So modeling uh, degradation of material is, is extremely uh, difficult uh, with uh, such tools because remember that at the molecular level, we also study phenomena at the uh, nanoseconds uh, levels uh, or less. And um, degradation can be a process that occurs in, in a much, much longer time scale. However, uh, we can look at chemical reactions in general using uh, DFT tools. So we could look at the various way to for the polymer to react with the environment. I recently uh, published work on uh, autoxidation of uh, small drug molecules uh, in, in the presence of uh, antioxidants and study how those uh, small molecules are um, to be, uh, uh, are under uh, hydrogen abstractions. Huh? They, they lose uh, hydrogens due to the oxidant presence. So you, you can study uh, the chemical reaction leading to degradation of the material, but uh, you, you can't really look at the aging in time, in the long time scale that uh, is implied in uh, aging of material. But if you can come down to the elementary processes involved in this degradation, that, that you can study with, with MatStudio.